Welcome everyone to the Borscht Belt Comes to Glen Eagles. Our theme this afternoon centers on the Jewish culture of the Borscht Belt and what could be more appropriate than diving into its history. The Catskills had been a resort area for Gentiles in the 19th century. I never knew that. Did anybody know that? Somebody says it wasn't? I gotta have to swallow it. As Eastern European Jews, is that better? How's that? I think that's better. Okay, as Eastern European Jews immigrated in the early 20th century, some became farmers in the area. As their urban peers became more prosperous, they looked to do something they could never have imagined doing in the old country. What do you think that was? Exactly. Take, Take a holiday. In the 1920s and into the 1930s, however, some hotels and resorts, their advertisements were stated, no Jews are allowed, no Hebrews or consumptives. Now, there are lots of people here who remember signs like that. I remember signs like that in Toronto, um, by the beaches area, where there were no Jews allowed. So it's not something that happened in some time before us. It happened during our lifetimes. And unfortunately, it's beginning to happen again. This issue led to a need for alternatives that would readily accept Jewish families as guests. So the Jewish farmers began taking on boarders. And their boarding houses morphed into small hotels and bungalow colonies summer camps, and kuchelains, a Yiddish name for self-catered boarding houses, hence the Borscht Belt. The big resorts like Grossinger's, Kutcher's, the Concord, and the Nevely were pioneers of the all-inclusive vacation. They offered three meals a day, they offered snacks, entertainment, child care, sports facilities, plus a knish that you could just die for. <laughs> At the hotels, food was of primary importance, and there was a sense that too much was not enough. In the Catskills, the food seemed limitless. The single scene was also important. Many hotels hired young male college students to attract single girls of similar age. One book about the era said that the Catskills became one great marriage broker. How many here went to the Catskills? Just about everybody. It was a wonderful time, was it not? Not enough food. <laughs> I'll tell you, the entertainment was absolutely fantastic. Food was good, there was no question of that, and it was unending, but the entertainment was out of sight. And those were the days really before the big TV shows and that you would see uh, Ed Sullivan, etc., etc. So you, when you went to the Catskills, you saw entertainment that was really fantastic. The entertainment was first rate. Musicians like Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, and Dean Martin, and comics Danger Rodnerfield, Rodney Dangerfield, <laughs> Henny Youngman, Woody Allen, Phyllis Diller, Toady Fields, Joan Rivers, and Jerry Seinfeld toured the hotels. And many unknowns who later became famous worked at the resorts and that included Mel Brooks, Danny Kaye, Sid Caesar, Red Buttons, and would you believe that Will Chamberlain of NBA basketball fame was a bellhop at Kutcher's in the 1950s. In its heyday, as many as 500 resorts catered to guests of various incomes. These resorts, as well as the bungalow colonies, were a popular vacation spot for New York City Jews from the 1920s through the 1960s. We're now going to show a, a short video, and we know that you're going to enjoy this. Get in the car, because we're going to leave the city. We're driving to the Catskills, through the palace, it's so pretty. We're going to the mountains to 
people they don't make them like that anymore do they you don't have that kind of entertainment at this time I'd like Judy Golden to come to the microphone she's going to tell us about her life ex she's going to tell us about her life experience in the Borscht Belt itself Judy Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am the real deal. I grew up in the Borscht Belt. Uh, I'm sure that many people are aware of the popularity, are aware of the popularity of the Borscht Belt during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. 
the hotels are all gone, having made and lost many fortunes. No Concord Hotel, no Grossinger's Brown's Hotel, Kutcher's, Tamarack, where I was married many years ago, all vanished. Today, all that exists are vacant lots and windblown acres. But I sh wanted to share my personal story of growing up and working in the Catskills. At age three, my father became very ill and was told that he had to leave New York City or he would not survive. My parents proceeded to buy a chicken farm in a small town called Lake Huntington, which was about 20 miles from Monticello. Neither one knew anything about farms or chickens, but they moved on. I, my two siblings and parents moved to the country. My town was situated around a large lake where we swam and boated in the summer and skated in the winter time. This small town had five kosher hotels, a kosher butcher, and a number of bungalow colonies, sometimes called a kuchelane, within a short distance. In the summer, the town was packed, and in the winter, it was deserted. Many nights, I was lulled to sleep with music from the casino of the next door Lorraine Hotel. After attending a one-room schoolhouse where Miss Martin taught six grades in one room, I transferred to the large centralized public school. This was German country, and from then on, I was an outsider and experienced intermittent anti-Semitism. I was accepted academically, but never socially. When it came time to go to college, there was a multitude of hotels where I could finance my college expenses. My first two years, I worked as a waitress in the main building, in the main dining room at the Esther Manor Hotel. And then I graduated to Gross Singers for another three years, working again as a waitress in the main dining room. I worked seven days a week, no, no day of rest throughout the summer, and lived in staff quarters. Many young Jewish boys and occasionally girls from New York City traveled to the Bush Belt to earn money for college. Some of you may also have spent summers in the Bush Belt working. It was a lifestyle and a culture which has disappeared, never to return again but enabled me to obtain a college education and a lifelong career. Almost 1,200 hotels and boarding houses, along with 900 bungalow colonies, existed during that time. Food was delicious and plentiful, as one could order doubles and triples or whatever they wished. Many returned to this city weighing considerably more than what they were when they arrived. Comedians, stand-up comics, and musicians used the hotel as a training ground for that generation. Um, the performers were, as the previous speaker spoke, um, Don Rickles, Sid Caesar, Jerry Seinfeld, Red Buttons, Milton Berle, Joan Rivers, and even um, Eddie Fisher had his wedding with Debbie Reynolds at Grossinger's. Um, the list goes on, and who could ever forget Simon Says? Um, sadly, Gross Singer's Hotel closed in 1986. The days of clock, traffic, and bustling commerce through Broadway in Monticello has now transitioned into a population of ultra-Orthodox residents who have uh, relocated from Muncie, New York. The old axiom applies, you can't go home again. P.S. My father lived to see his children grow up and prosper, but when he left the farm and returned to his original line of work, which was a milliner, he died of leukemia a year later. Okay. Thank you, Judy. That was, that's very interesting. I really am amazed as, as to the fact that there, there were at least one person in this complex that actually lived and worked in the Borscht Belt. 
everybody that I knew went went there for a holiday, and it was it was quite unique. Uh, it's a place that just doesn't exist anymore. It exists only in your in your fond memories. Um, Marvin, Marvin, would you do us the great pleasure of coming up and uh, introducing your, what it is that you're going to be singing and, uh, and taking over the microphone from there? God bench America, land was ich lieb, stay the by here, madrich sei here, he brought like the straw and so leave, from the berg bees to the prairies. Bees the arm in vice me shorn. God bench America, mine zeeser heim. God bench America, mine zeeser song without an explanation would not serve its purpose. This simple one verse song became an overnight hit and a hopeful song as war threatened. It's not a patriotic song but an expression of gratitude for what this country has done for its citizens of what home really means. Today, many Americans consider God Bless America an unofficial national anthem of the United States. The life of Irving Berlin is an American success story. He was born Israel Balin in the Jewish village of Tumen in a harsh region of Russia known as Siberia. When he was about five, an anti-Jewish mob destroyed his family's home and the Balins settled for America. They settled on New York's Lower East Side. Irving Berlin's father died when he was eight and Izzy, as he was later called, went to work selling newspapers to help support his family. As a young teen, he began singing in saloons and at some point taught himself piano. A printing error on the published piece of sheet music left him with the name Irving Berlin, and that was the name he carried as he wrote song after song. When describing his goal as a songwriter, Berlin said, my ambition is to reach the heart of the average American, that vast intermediate crew which is the real soul of the country. My public is the real people. Kate Smith, one of the great singers of her day, had asked Irving for a new number for her radio show. The year was 1938 and she was looking for something fresh to mark the 20th anniversary of the end of the Great War, what would later be called World War I. Irving Berlin, at a composer's block. He felt the urgency to deliver. He had recently returned from Europe where Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler, was growing more powerful and aggressive and seemed to be preparing for war. But Berlin wasn't focused on writing a Get America Ready for War song. He wanted to create something to celebrate America as a special place to live. Then he remembered a song he had drafted years earlier. He pulled out an old trunk and dusted off the 20-year-old manuscript entitled 
God bless America. I'd like everybody here to join me. You have in your songbook on page one, the English words to God bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet Thank you, Marvin. That was, that was really, that was terrific. We have to realize. Yeah, I'm a little taller than Marvin, but not by much. <laughs> the, the song, this, uh, God Bless America was first introduced in the Armistice Day broadcast by Kate Smith. She subsequently was the singer of choice to present the song at Philadelphia Flyer hockey games in the 1970s. And if there's anybody here from the Philadelphia area, you'd certainly remember the Flyers. Next year. Oh, well, we'll feel sorry. Anybody, anybody got their black arm armbands arm on for Philadelphia? It was also the official campaign song for the presidential election in 1940 between Roosevelt and Wilkie. It is, it is symbolic of the freedom America, uh, immigrants sought in America. Now we have a song that is dedicated to one of America's great pastimes. Ron, Ron Caden. Marvin's a little bit of a tough act to follow, but we'll uh, <coughs> do what we can. Just a little bit of information about the song. Um, it was written in the early 1900s, and um, I'm sure many of you know that songs in the early part of the 20th century, many of them had a verse that was sung before the main melody that, um, that we're aware of. A lot of the, uh, the great standards that we've listened to in the Great American Songbook have verses, and I'm sure a lot of you, when you hear the, the verse, you can, you can almost pick out the song. Um, I decided today to do the, um, the verse to take me out to the ball game. I thought it was a little bit of fun, and you might enjoy listening to it. I'm not doing that in Yiddish. Uh, <laughs> Couldn't, couldn't handle that, but um, okay, just gotta get my key here. <clears throat> Nellie Kelly loved baseball games, knew the players, knew all their names. You could see her there every day, shout hooray when they play. Her boyfriend by the name of Joe said to Coney Isle, dear, we'll go. Then Nellie started to fret and pout, and to him I heard her shout, take me out to the ball game, take me out to the crowd, buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back to the root. Root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Okay, now in, uh, in Yiddish, uh, 
Nämlich mit zu der Ball gehen, zu meinem Lohn er doch gehen. Kein mehr den nicht lecken, crack, good Jack. Weg in kein Molfin, not dit a weg, it sei mut, mut mut die Ball spieler. Es passt nicht als mess verspielt, weil es ist eins, zwei, Drei strikes und eis bei der Baseballspiel. We're now going to have a, a, a series of, of folks who are going to come up and they're going to sing a particular song. Uh, Jerry. Cohen, if you would, please. Can I be heard? Yes. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> first, first, I want to wish a big yasher koach to the committee for putting this program together. Um, I, I, I'm not a singer. But I am a lover of the Yiddish language. And when my good friend Marvin Slutschuk asked me if I would sing a song in Yiddish, uh, I thought I couldn't refuse. So as your program suggests, this, the song is Tumba Laika. Let me tell you a little bit about it based on a little bit of uh, research you could find about Tumba Laika. It's a Russian Yiddish folk song and it was probably written, from what I could find out, in the 1930s and uh, in the shtetl, somewhere in Eastern Europe, and sung throughout the ages from then on. Uh, you could YouTube and you could hear, listen to the Berry Sisters sing it, and after I do, you probably would want to. You could listen to Pete Singer, you could listen to a variety of uh, Chazonim cantors who, uh, who have sung this song as well. So let me just tell you a little bit about it. It's a love song in three short stanzas with a lovely uh, chorus in between, which I hope you'll sing with me. Um, and here's what it's about. Um, a young man is, stays up all night trying to decide whether to propose to a particular woman. That's the first stanza. In the second stanza, he decides he wants to find out how smart she is, and he decides to pose a couple of riddles to her. He, he, he wants to know, he asks, for instance, um, what can, let me just uh, look at the Yiddish, um, what can burn and burn and burn and never be extinguished? He also asks, what can yearn for something and cry without tears? And in the third stanza, she answers him and she says, silly boy, love can burn and burn and burn and never be extinguished. And uh, a heart can yearn for somebody and uh, cry without tears. Now, we never know the end of this love story, but we're given a hint because in the chorus, we're told that if we sing and if we play this Russian stringed instrument, called uh, balalaika, that um, everything will be good, and we assume that love story materializes. The chorus is sung at the beginning and at the end and between each verse, and you know it, and please sing it with me. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika, tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika, tumbala laika, spiel bala laika, tumbala laika, freilach vet sein. And as you know, freilach, or as you may know, freilach vet sein means uh, everything uh, will be good. So here we go, first chorus. Somebody's going to, I heard somebody knows the first word. Steht a bocher, steht er und tracht, tracht und tracht a ganze Nacht. 
Vemen su nemen unit far shemen, vemen su nemen unit far shemen. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika, tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala laika, spiel bala laika, tumbala laika, freilach let's sign. He poses the question. Madel, madel, feel by dear fragen. Vos can vox and voxen on regen. Vos can bran and unit of hern. Vos can bang can shen and on friend. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala laika, spiel bala laika. Tumbala laika, freila fed sein. Does she ever have an answer? Narisha bocher, vos darfst du fregen. Think and breath and voxen on regen. Liebe can bren and unit of hern. A heart can bang can vein and on tren. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala, tumbala, tumbala laika. Tumbala laika, shmilbala laika. Tumbala laika, freila That was terrific. Thank you very much, Jerry. Would Fanny please come to the microphone? Fanny, Fanny. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. The song I'm going to sing for you and with you and with my late parents. It's called, Tell Me Where I Can Go. This is a song as an example of the musical activity in the camps in occupied Germany, particularly in the musical repertoire. The people created and performed this reflects the frustrations and hopes of survivors as they attempt to envision the future and rebuild their lives. It is generally regarded as an anthem of the surviving European Jew. Melancholic, sadness, despair, survival, ultimately hope. I'm Fanny Korn a daughter of Holocaust survivors, but I was born in the Dutch Caribbean. I'm going to ask you to participate with me in a tiny little feeling. If you close your eyes for a couple of seconds, close them. Imagine that you're walking on pudding, shaky. Imagine that you're walking on stones that don't have a foundation and you're not stable and you don't know where you're going. This is actually where our people were at that time. My parents did not see one another for a year. They were lost. So, in those times, there's very little, there's very little there in song because there was just trojerikeit, sadness and difficulties. Now that you felt the instability in standing on pudding and, and pedals that are not firm, you can imagine the feelings of those people not knowing and coming out of darkness. <laughs> Als verschlossen jede Tier, es die Welt groß genick, nur vermehre senken klein, wie er blickt 
noch zurück. Als es, als es finster ist, es schwer, wer hin soll ich gehen? Dort dahin will ich gehen. In mein Land, wo es ist frei. Dort dahin soll ich gehen. Wie es alles nur nei, ein Land, wo es jede Sky blieht. Und das Leben, der dort geht und frei verderit. Israel ist unser Land, Israel ist unser Heim, wie dort jeden Lebensraum. Sein Land und sein Heim. Dort dahin will ich gehen, Israel ist unser Heim, mit Hoffnung und Glück. I'm sorry, a little emotional, but it's true. Israel was the ultimate hope for our people who managed to survive the atrocities of that era. And in their honor, I sing this song. Thank you so much, Fanny. That must have been difficult for you. Um, Sam Wilder, would Sam please come? That is you. It's been you for a long time. <laughs> How are you? A very long time. So my nomen is uh, Yoshua Wilder, but you can call me Sam. That's a, that's a very tough song to, to follow. Uh, mine is quite different. But when Marvin first, before I even say what I was going to say, uh, Marvin's tribute to the American hosts touched my heart because uh, we Canadians, I'm from Winnipeg, Marvin's from Winnipeg, you've seen enough Canadians, I suppose, but we feel at home and we can sing God Bless America because America, well, certainly was great and I hope it's going to continue to be and good luck to you all. Now when Marvin first asked me, am I okay with the mic? Okay. When Marvin first asked me if I would sing a Yiddish song, um, I was sort of reticent. I, I'm not a singer, uh, but on the other hand, um, when he told me what the song was, uh, the Rebbe Eli Melech, it brought back thoughts of days at my Zeta's house on Boyd Street in Winnipeg, sitting around his very big table with the extended family, and we sang and we sang and we sang Yiddish songs, and uh, my uncles and aunts and the whole works. And when they sang, they asked my older brother Joe and I every now and then if we could sing the Rebbe Eli Melech. And that's how I got to know the Rebbe Eli Melech, which is a different version slightly that's in the book. But in any event, I couldn't say no when I heard it was the Rebbe Eli Melech, but I want you to know that the first time I've ever sung before an audience was at my bar mitzvah, and this is the second. <laughs> so we'll do the best that I can. Now, mute. Bazooksta? Bazooksta? <laughs> Please! <laughs> I'll take anything. You know, music is really in the, embedded in the heart and the soul of the Jew. We sing when we're unhappy, when we're sad. We sing when we mourn. We sing when we're happy. And happily, I've got a very simple but a very Freilich song. If I had a klezmer band here, it would be perfect because this is this is lively, and there's three verses to this song. And when um, you get to the third one, don't sing. But for the first two, it's okay because the third one is a little different. Now, some have said that this song is sort of a, a Jewish version of Old King Cole. It's sort of there's something in common. Uh, it was published in 1927 by. Uh, Moshe Nadir was his name. He had several names when he was in Galicia, where he came from and em immigrated to uh, New York City. He was born in 1898, 
and he did this in 1927. So the song is before our worst experiences. Uh, it was a happy song, and it was sung very often. He, ran, he wrote, wrote many other Jewish songs. Uh, unfortunately, Wikipedia didn't tell me what they were, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> now, the version that I'm going to use is the one that I used when I was a kid in my Zeta's house, and Theodore Bikel has it in his album. And if you like J uh, Jewish folk songs, get the album by F uh, Theodore Bikel of Yiddish folk songs. It's terrific. It's really good. And uh, in it, uh, there are some of the songs you, you heard today. In any event, let me begin. And please, when we get to the chorus, you'll get the hang of it very, uh, very quickly. When as the Rebbe Eli Melach is given Zeir Freilach, is given Zeir Freilach Eli Melach, hat er euch getan die Tfillen und hat angetan die Brillen und geschickt vor die Fiedlers die zwei. When as the Fiedel dicke Fiedel, haben Fiedel dicke Fiedel, haben Fiedel dicke Fiedel, haben sie. Here's the turn. Fiddled, haben fiddled, dick a fiddled, haben fiddled, dick a fiddled, um, say. When as the Rebbe Eli Meloth is given, noch mir freiloth, is given, noch mir freiloth, Eli Meloth, hat er sich gemacht, have dollar. In geschick, in geschick for them shamus naf tolle, und geschick for the pipers the zwei, und as the pipel dicke pipers haben pipel dicke pipel, und pipel dicke pipel haben zwei, und as the pipel dicke pipel haben pipel dicke pipel, haben pipel dicke pipel haben zwei. Und as the Rebbe Eli Melach. He's given gur gur freilach. He's given gur gur freilach. Eli melach hat er eis getan dem kittel und hat angetan dem hittel und geschickt vor die zimblers die zwei und die zimbel dicke zimblers haben zimbel dicke zimbel zimbel dicke zimbel haben sie und die zimbel dicke zimblers haben fiddle dicke fiddle haben Haben, what is it, one? Uh, haben, symbol, they get symbol, haben, say. I shame them down. Thank you. That was terrific. It reminds me of the old story that you used to say as a kid Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It's kind of hard to get through that. Ah. Uh, We started off talking about the Catskills, and I just want to bring you back there for a, for a moment. The Catskills were the essence of the Jewish ethos, faith, humor and all of its irony and pathos, ambition and romance. Lenny Bruce used to say, if you live in New York, you're Jewish, even if you aren't. <laughs> that was the Borscht Belt. Now, we have... Is it Elaine? Is it Elaine's turn, or is that Marvin. just a second? No, it's Marvin has to has a song to sing. <laughs> uh, how many here want to guess what song he's going to sing? <laughs> Marvin. The uh, <clears throat> the next number really doesn't need much of an introduction, as you can see from my uh, newly coiffed beard and uh, Tevye's hat and his vest. Uh, I give you three guesses. The first two don't count. It's going to be um, if I were a rich man. Now, if I were a rich man is a show tune from the 1964 musical Fiddler on the Roof. It was written by Sheldon Harnick and Jerry Bach. 
The song is performed by Tevye, uh, the main character in the musical, and reflects his dreams of glory. The title is inspired by a 1902 monologue by Sholem Aleichem in Yiddish, Wenn ich bin a Rothschild. <laughs> if I were a Rothschild, a reference, of course, to the wealth of the Rothschild family. Through the first two verses, Tevye dreams of the material comforts that wealth would bring him. He describes the enormous house he would buy and the needless luxuries he would fill it with, including a third staircase leading nowhere just for show. <laughs> and then the poultry he would buy to fill his yard. In the third verse, Tevye switches his attention to the luxuries in which he would shower his wife, Goldie. Tevye contemplates the esteem that wealth would bring him with important men seeking his advice. In the final verse, Tevye considers how wealth would allow him to spend less time working and more time praying and studying the Torah. He ends the song by adding, asking God, if it would spoil some vast eternal plan if he were wealthy. A repeated phrase throughout the song, all day long I bitty bitty bum, is often misunderstood to refer to Tevye's desire not to have to work. However, Sheldon Harnick, the writer, said that he basically made up the syllables that he thought would give the effect of Hasidic chanting. Rabona Shalolam was doch beschaffen a Welt mit eurem Leid. Dear God, you made many, many, many poor people. Und wesen, wesach doch, as is gar nicht kein Schande zu sein an eurem Mann. I realize, of course, it's no shame to be poor. Or But it's no great honor either. Is was wot gewen a so schlecht, wenn ich wot yoga hat a kleiner oinzer. So what would have been so terrible if I had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, Yabba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dum All day long I'd biddy-biddy-bum If I were a wealthy man I wouldn't have to work hard Yabba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dibba-dum If I were a biddy-biddy-rich Yidle-diddle-diddle-diddle man I'd build a, a big, a tall house with rooms by the dozen right in the middle of the town. A fine tin roof with real wooden floors below. There would be one long staircase just going up and one even longer coming down and one more leading nowhere just for sure I fill my yard with chicks and turkeys and geese and ducks for the town to see and hear squawking just as noisily as they can and each loud agi, ago, aga would land like a trumpet on the ear as if to say here lives a wealthy man I, if i were a rich man all day long i'd bitty bitty bum if i were a wealthy man I wouldn't have to work hard. Yabba dibba 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 dum. If I were a bitty bitty rich, idle diddle 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 man, 
I'd see my wife, my Goldie, looking like a rich man's wife with a proper double chin. Supervising meals to her heart's delight. I'd see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock. Oh, what a happy mood she's in. Screaming at the servants day and night. The most important men in town would come to fawn on me. They would ask me to advise them like a Solomon the wise. If you please, Reptavia. Pardon me, Reptavia, posing problems that would cross a rabbi's eyes. Dumb, and it won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, they think you really know. If I were rich, I'd have the time that I lack to sit in the synagogue and pray and maybe have a seat by the eastern wall. And I discuss the holy books with the learned men several hours every day. And that would be the sweetest thing of all. If I were a rich man, dum all day long I'd biddy biddy bum. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. dum Lord who made the lion, lion and the lamb, you decreed I should be what I am. Would it spoil some vast eternal plan if I were a wealthy man? Wasn't that great? Let's have another, another round of applause for Mark. Elaine, if I think now is your turn. <laughs> I'm about to sing the song Donna Donna, and the first and last stanza I'm going to read in English first. On a wagon bound for market, there's a calf with a mournful eye. High above him there's a swallow, swinging swiftly through the sky. How the winds are laughing, they laugh with all their might. Laugh and laugh the whole day through and half the summer's night, Donna Donna. Calves are easily bound and slaughtered, never knowing the reason why. But whoever treasures freedom, like the swallow, has learned to fly. How the winds are laughing. They laugh with all their might, laugh and laugh the whole day through, and half the summer's night, Donna Donna. How does a 1940 Yiddish theater song, probably based on a passage from the Talmud's tract Baba Metzia, end up becoming a popular piece sung around the world? Over a 75 year period, Aaron Zeitlin's Donna Donna in Yiddish, Dos Kelbel, has been sung by some of the 20th century's biggest English-speaking performers, including Joan Baez, Donovan, the Chad Mitchell Trio, Chad and Jeremy, and countless others. It has been sung in Japanese, German, French, Swedish, Hebrew, Russian, Italian, Catalan and Vietnamese. Zeitlin's original Dos Kelbel was put to music by Sholem Secunda, and in 1956, 
Arthur Kevis and Teddy Schwartz translated it into English. Donna Donna was part of Zeitlin's Yiddish play Esterke, based on the legendary rela relationship of a Jewish woman named Esther and King Casimir the Great, Casimir Javielka. And how do I know that Casimir Javielka name, you wonder? That's the town my father was born in. So Zeitlin first published it in 1932 in Globus, the Yiddish literary journal he edited. The play about Esterke and Kazimierz the Great was a Polish Jewish mystery in four acts. Male and female actors sang Dona Dona as a solo, a duet, and a chorus with orchestration. He was invited to New York for the performance of Esterke which is an indication of how influential Yiddish theater was in the pre-Second World War Jewish cultural world. With the outbreak of the war, however, he was unable to sail back to his family and Nishtugadak to his wife. Two children, father and brother, were killed in the Holocaust. Joan Baez, and that was the first person that I heard the song from, and I can remember the moment, like we all can, of, of songs that we love was probably more than anyone else in North America responsible for popularizing the English version of the song. And she said she was attracted to the beauty of the melody. At the beginning of her long career, she sang Donna Donna as a civil rights protest song. And it appeared on her first album and became a staple in her performances. In 1975 in Seoul, South Korea, the government banned the playing of Donna Donna. The government considered the song to be leftist and violence-inducing. Pointing to how times change or perhaps stay the same, in 2018, Liao Yiwu, a Chinese writer in exile, used Donna Donna to boost the morale of someone under long-term house arrest. He had been trying to get permission for the poet Lu Xia to immigrate to Germany. In a phone call that year, the severely depressed widow cried continuously, saying, it's easier to die than to live. And Liao Yi Wu played Donna Donna for his desperate friend, who has since been released and allowed to leave for, journal, for Germany. Given that Zeitlin had religious training, I'm going to take you back to one of your favorite books, the Talmud's Baba Metziah. It's a likely inspiration for this song. The Gemara tells the story of how Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the redactor of the Mishnah, came to endure terrible pains. A young calf, destined for the slaughterhouse, met up with the rabbi. The calf placed its head under the rabbi's coattails and cried. Yehuda Hanasi said to it, go, it, it was for this that you were created. Because he, sh he should have shown greater mercy to the calf, the rabbi was punished for 13 years with great suffering, and only when he expressed pity for some baby animals did his pains leave. So you can imagine with Jews how many interpretations there are to this song, Dona Dona. I'm gonna sing the first verse in English, and then one in Yiddish and one in Hebrew, and I hope you'll remember the refrain. On a wagon bound for market, there's a calf with a mournful eye. High above him there's a swallow winging swiftly through the sky. How the winds are laughing, they laugh with all their might. Laugh and laugh the whole day through and half the summer's night donna 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 here comes the hebrew Egel raka shur bechevel al ha agala mutal ule mala bashamaim efronim mamrimim el al ruach stav tsochek lo tsochek umitolel. Zrock und 
לצחוק מבוקר עוד ועד חצי הלל דונה 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 Hoich in Himmel flieht das Schwebel, freut sich, dreht sich hin und krieg. Lacht der Wind in Korn, lacht und lacht und lacht. Lacht er ob a Tag a ganzen, mit a halber Nacht. Donna, 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 Donna. Donna, 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 Donna. Thank you so much, Elaine. That was beautiful. It really was. And now we would like to have Fanny return to the microphone. And Fanny is going to sing something which you're all very, very familiar with. Okay, I'm into the nostalgia. My state of bells. It's symbolic. It's so symbolic. The song expresses the longing for Jewish life in Belts, Basarabia. By chance, my father came from Basarabia. The words were written by actor Jacob Jacobs, 1892 to 1972, and the melody composed by Alexander Olshanetsky, 1892-1946. So the song was written in 1932 for the play Ghetto Song as a tribute to the famous singer Issa Kramer, born in Belts was probably the first to perform it. And the song became very famous in New York. But my father was from Basarabia. And my father died at the age of 97. The last four years of his life, he lived in Israel and he was mostly paralyzed except for his mouth, his, his hand, and his mind functioned beautifully. And it go like this. Tochter, ich will mich der Mannen in meine Kinder schüren. Sie springt wie ein Cholem. Es war's mir aus, als ich stiebele, wie ich bin geboren geworden, und ich will auch hab gewohnt, wie ein Mühle so hat geglänzt, die wachs, die sie das Bämele wachs noch, sie, wo sie ich hab verpflanzt, sagt er, Oi, mein Städt alle Bels, mein Heim alle dort, wie ich hab meine Kinderche Juden verbracht. Bels, mein Städt alle Bels, mein Heim alle dort, wie ich hab meine Kinderche Juden verbracht. Jeden Schabes pfleg ich läufen mit alle in Galach zu, zu Klach. Zu sitzen hinter dem grünen Bäumele, lehnen beim dem Tag. Oi, mein Städtele Bels, mein Heimele dort, wie ich hab meine Kinder schön Juden verbracht. Mein Vater sagt, Tochter, es gewinnt mein Heim. Mein Mama hat gemacht Knisches mit Kasche, mit Kartoffel, in den Käse. In Baranikis, it is given Muletam, it is showing the stool. Now, the stool must be grown old, be grown. The stool is old, in the window glance, the stool is old. It is broken, the wind. I want to be sure it is not heard. Oi, my stool is old. 
Mein Himmel dort, wie ich hab meine Kinder schön Juden verbracht. Thank you for that. Thank you for that little bit of nostalgia, Fanny. We're going to be coming very close to winding up, but before we do, Marvin is going to sing another song. <laughs> the uh, next song doesn't really need much of an introduction. It is something very close uh, to my heart. Uh, My Yiddish Mama is a song written by Jack Yellen and Lou Pollock and was made famous in vaudeville by Sophie Tucker and later by the Barry sisters. Uh, Tucker began singing My Yiddish Mama in 1925. After the death of her own mother, she later dedicated her autobiography, Some of These Days, to Yellen a grand songwriter <clears throat> and a grander friend. Sophie Tucker made Mama a top five US hit in 1928. English on one side and Yiddish on the B side. Meine Yiddish Mama Nicht du kun besser in der Welt, meine jüdische Mama, oi wei wie bitte, wenn sie fällt, wie schön und lichtig ist in Haus, Wie treurig findest du werfen Gott, nimmt ihr euch vor Lammabo, durch Wasser und Feier, wo sie gelaufen fahrt ihr Kind. Nicht auf mir Taie, das ist gewiss der größten Sinn. Oi, wie glücklich und reich ist der Mensch, was hat, als ein teure Matana. Geschenk von Gott, nur ein altisch gehidische Mama, meine jehidische, jehidische I'd uh, like everybody to uh, join in uh, as we sing our final song, Hava Nagila, which of course in the Hebrew means, let us all rejoice, and the words are uh, in the uh, booklet. Let the, the committee please come up. I think Faith. Before that, I think before that Mel should say something. Okay. Okay, okay say that. Okay. My boss informed me of the uh, manner in which we're going to close the today's session, and I certainly hope you all enjoyed today's program. As much as we enjoyed putting it together for you, and we'd like to thank Glen Eagle staff, specifically Tammy Klein, Jamie Allison, and Kimberly Field for their help. You know, without these people, this just doesn't happen. The, the chairs to be arranged, the audio, the, the videos, the, the whole thing. It's the the people here at, at Glen Eagles are just been, been fantastic. 
Before I say so long for now, please remember that our last program to celebrate Purim is scheduled for Tuesday, March 14 at the Glengarry Satellite. Marvin, let's now have our last song and we'll be on with it. Does everybody want to come up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have uh, Hava Nagila in your booklets and uh, I'll do the uh, song first and then have everybody join in as we do it in unison. Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila ben Ismecha. Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila ben Ismecha. Hava Nirvana, Hava Nirvana. Hava nevana nave nismecha. Hava nevana na. Hava nevana na. Hava nevana nave nismecha. Oro oro achim oro achim belef sameach oro achim belef sameach oro achim belef sameach. Horachim, belevasameach. Everybody now louder. Hava nagila, hava nagila, hava nagila venismecha. Hava nagila, hava nagila, hava nagila venismecha. Hava neronena, hava neronena, hava neronena venismecha. Hava neronena, hava neronena, hava neronena venismecha. Horo. Hodo Achim, Hodo Achim, Belef Sameach, Hodo Achim, Belef Sameach, Hodo Achim, Belef Sameach, Hodo Achim, Hodo Achim, Belef And as Walt Disney said, da, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> Very wonderful. Thank you. Oh, no, that's a pleasure. What a fun, what a work. It was a lot of work, I'm sure. I don't think people realize. Yes, I do believe it. I do. 